What's up, family of God? Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, and we're here at it once again. Amen. Getting on the Blaze Bible Study, my favorite Bible study all through the week. You know, I love these Bible studies at night. I do a 10 a.m. morning Devo and a 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Blaze Bible Study when I can. And I'm available today. There might be some background noise. It's because we're night owls over here. And right next to the studio, you might hear my my daughter has this thing of yelling and screaming at the top of her lungs. Amen. And it's uh, music to my ears. Amen. So that's what you'll be hearing. Nobody's getting hurt. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's, uh, you know, getting beat up or anything like that. That's just my daughter. She has a loud vocals like she has some vocals on her she's gonna be like her mom she's gonna be a singer like her mom amen so it's your brother dj sam rock i'm here i'll be your blaze host your bible study host for tonight and we're going to talk about being a citizen of heaven i did this a couple of weeks back on the morning devo i decided to do this on the blaze bible study because i'd rather be called a citizen of heaven than a member of a church that's that's my preference. I'd rather be known as a man of God than a man of some kind of religion. I'd rather be known as a man who loved Jesus other than, you know, some kind of religious leader out there just preaching some stuff. I want to be what God wants me to be, what God created me to be. I am a wannabe. I want to be like Jesus. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, I'm streaming live from here. I'm streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. On the podcast live, all over the platforms that a podcast can be heard. Spreaker Network, iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Amazon Music as well. I'm on Amazon Music as well. I'm trying my best to get this message out to as many people as possible before my time here is up. So any questions, comments, concerns, prayer requests, I welcome them all. Amen. This is the Blaze Bible Study. This is our time to get into the Word of God. Amen. And I'm a night owl. I was thinking about maybe doing some stuff at 12, 2 in the morning, whatever, amen, so I could read some people from other time zones, um, but it, it all depends, amen. My daughter started school, so it's up for me in the morning, take her to school, amen, so that's another uh, blessing that God has allowed me to see with my own two eyes, the miracle of God upon my life with my family, amen. It's a long story. A lot of people know my testimony. Other people don't know my testimony about why I'm so like blown away every time I see my daughters, my two daughters. They are miracles straight from heaven, and I'm a citizen of heaven, so therefore I know where my blessings come from. Amen? Sister Joyce, God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study. We're going to be up for a little bit tonight, and we're going to get into the Holy Spirit Word of God. Amen? The Holy Spirit, we're going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 2. I'll be talking about some other passages in scripture, but we're going to focus on Acts chapter 2 and the very beginning of what happened with the apostles. What happened to the 120 disciples that were up in that room? Must have been hotter than it is in this studio because it's hot in here. I turned everything off so I won't have any background noise. I turned the fan off and everything and it's hot. And I even got one of the windows open, but I figured if I leave all the windows open in this studio, you're going to hear nothing but crickets because they're out there and they're making a lot of noise out there. It's like a wilderness um, behind this studio. So I decided to shut everything down and I'll, I'll suffer a little bit for the cause, right? And I got these lights blazing on me as well. Woo, it's hot. But we're at the end of the summer. Fall is coming. So there's a new season coming up. So I want to stay in gear. I want to stay in touch. I want to know what God wants for my life. And I'm pretty sure you want to know what God wants for you too. So that's why I decided let's get together. Let's talk about Holy Spirit God. Let's end off the summer big. Let's end off the summer with the power of God. Amen. And in September, it'll be, let's see, 2008 and 2018. That was 10 years. Two more years. That's 12. It'll be um, 13 years, I think, I'm doing this podcast or more. I always, I'm always off on my math, man. So I started in 2008. We're in 2021, right? I don't even know what year we're in anymore, man. It's sad, right? How the days just go by. So whatever that is, 21 minus um, 2008. Amen. Um, it's funny that uh, I'm so bad with math, but I could do it right now. We're in 2021 minus 2008. And 13 years, it'll be doing this Blaze Bible study. And the ministry soul winners has been alive. For 13 years, all glory to God, in September. So I'm excited about that. And by October, I'm going to make a prediction. I don't really make a lot of predictions, but it looks like from the from the rhythm of things, from the pattern of things, 
from what I see in my analytics, it looks like by October, we'll reach over 1 million listeners on the Sailor Radio Network. And that'll be the second time, all glory to the God of heaven and earth. It'll be the second time on the second network that I've had a million listeners. This will be the second network. So I, in my life, in my lifetime broadcasting, I've reached over 2 million listeners. If that ever happens on this ministry, if the Lord tarries and allows me to see that day. Amen. And that's all glory to God. As you can see, I'm just a man that loves Jesus out there preaching the gospel, and he does amazing things with a sold out heart. When you are for Christ, when you are for Christ, when you sold out for the Lord, amen, he'll do amazing things in your life. He's doing things in my life, and I know he could do greater things in your life, even, right? So questions, comments, concerns, all through, just make sure I even have the phone lines open if you want to call in. The number is 484 284 let me see. I got to wait for it to stream because I have my little card here. It's 484. I should know about heart right now, right? 273-2430 if you want to call in with any questions, comments, or concerns. And that's a shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. Of course, it's only audio. I will not put anybody fit face without permission on this stream, right? I won't do that to you. Amen. And it'll just be audio. So it'll, it'll be all good with that part. Amen. That's if you want to call in. So... With that said, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2, and we're talking about that suddenly day, that sudden day that the suddenly happened to the people who were waiting in the upper room, 120 people waiting in the upper room, waiting for the promise of Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jesus said, wait in that room, wait for the promise to come. The promise came and they went out on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And people that were around them knew that they were with Jesus. And they also knew that these disciples, these people, these 120 people, most of them were uneducated people. So how is it that they were speaking in all different languages, all different tongues, and they were being heard by all these nations represented in that crowd? And they were like, they must be drunk. And the disciples like, listen, man, it's like 12 in the afternoon. We ain't drinking. We ain't drunk. We're filled with Holy Spirit God. And then that's the birth of the church, preaching the gospel message with power and authority, empowered by the Holy Spirit God. And so this very day, we are still the disciples of Jesus Christ. I mean, we are still on fire. We're still empowered by the Holy Spirit God. Amen. Doing things that are incredible in our lives and incredible in the lives of all those who said yes and amen to the Lord Jesus, prompting in his spirit and his lead. So when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And that's why I like to get together in one place. Because I know when two or more gathered in the midst, there is Jesus. In the midst of our situation, in the midst of our prayers, in the midst of our preaching, in the midst of our teaching, in the midst of our sadness, in the midst of our gladness and our hope and our journey in life, God is in the midst. Two or three, in the name of Jesus, amen, he shows up in our situation in real time. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but right now, right now, today. Amen. And that's that to me, that gets me pumped up. That gets me excited, knowing that God is available at the time that we need him. And boy, do we need him right now. We need him in this nation. We need him in our lives. We need him every day, all day. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need God every single day. There's not one day that I could go without him. How about that? Amen. I'll make that declaration. I'll make that statement right now to the top of the day. Amen. At the top of this Blaze Bible study. So let me just change the scene and we go to my main shot. There you see in front of you the screen. We have every place you could visit me. You could, I have uh, Facebook, um, YouTube. We have uh, Instagram. Um, that's how you reach me on those social media platforms. Also, if you find it in your heart to donate to this ministry, to help this ministry, help other ministries and help other families. Listen, you did it again. Thank you so much. I was able to bless a brother in Christ. Amen. Him and his ministry and his family. Just because you have blessed this ministry, I was able to bless another family and another ministry. So thank you so much for all those who have sown seed into this ministry. Your seed has traveled far beyond, amen, what you could ever think of or imagine. Amen. And it's even came from these borders to other borders around the world, which are countries which I have to leave unnamed. Amen. Um, just for security purposes and reasons, because we have brothers and sisters in countries right now that are preaching the gospel, right? Backed up by Soul Winners Inc., backed up by us because we get together and we do this together. Amen. And they're doing it big in their countries where Jesus is like a crime word or a crime name to even mention. 
And they're risking it all because they know the power of God in their lives. And they know if they can reach a person in their country for the cause of Christ and they get saved, there's going to be a revolution. The underground churches all around the world are still alive and they're thriving. And they're looking at the U.S. and like, what are you guys afraid of? What are you guys worried about? We are here losing losing it all, risking our lives, preaching the gospel, even being killed for it. And we are here, I, I believe, in a, in a lap of luxury pretty much. Yes, we are told to shut up and be quiet, but we're not being persecuted like our brothers and sisters in other parts of the world. They are being persecuted even persecuted even to death in some countries so we need to pray for one another pray for our family in other countries even if you never made it there even if you never stepped foot on that soil in other parts of the world the gospel is there the people that preach the gospel are there and our brothers and sisters are there so when the body of christ is in the world amen we're totally holding back total evil to come over this world now there's going to be a day that god's going to take his spirit spirit out of this world Amen. But in the meantime, we're here and we're standing firm in the things of God. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is our main hero. He's our main hero, right? So let's do this. Let's pray. And after we pray, we're going to share this out for one minute. Share this out to as many people as you can because I'm shadow banned here on this platform. But on YouTube and on other places that I may not be shadow banned, amen, you can help the algorithm change things. Amen. That's why I'm trying to multi-stream. I'm even on Twitch. If you want to look at my Twitch channel, it's only live videos on Twitch. So it's DJ underscore Sandrock. And that, that'll be the, for the Twitch if you want to find me there as well. For those who are gamers and those who know about Twitch, you might be a DJ. I'm a DJ too, believe it or not. Amen. I do DJ. As a matter of fact, this past Saturday, I had the honor and privilege of being hired to celebrate a woman of God's 70th birthday. Amen. And they were from New Jersey. Amen. New Jersey was in the house and we were in Eastern PA celebrating um, that woman of God's birthday. Um, so shout out to that family that I celebrated, helped celebrate her birthday. Looks like they were having a good time. Amen. It was a great time. So a minute to pray. A minute to share. Amen. And so if you have a prayer request, now's your time. Amen. To um, put it up there. Don't worry about it. If you have something that you don't want to be made public, you could always inbox me or you could always email me at DJ Sandrock at soulwinners with a Z dot O-R-G. Email me at DJ Sandrock at soulwinners with a Z dot O-R-G. I'll leave that up um, during the prayer so you can know what's going on. And also, if you want to just check out my, this Bible study and the podcast off social media, you want to get out of Dodge, you want to less distractions as possible, you could always go to the website, uh, right? DJSamrock.com forward slash Bible study, and it'll take you right to my Bible study page online. Or you could just go to soulwinnerswithaz.org. Amen. I'm trying to make this so easy and so effortless and so like distraction free for you to get this word, to get this word, because I know. Uh, and social media, when you're on and you're watching a live on social media, here goes all those other, you know, prompts and all those other things. And it causes you to start going like this with your finger, right? And you're like, wait a minute. I forgot that I was on a Bible study. So I'm getting distracted right now. Look, I just touched it. So that's why I say, listen, let me just put everything on the website. And the website, there's very few distractions, no pop-ups at all, no advertisements, none of that. It's just straight up what's happening, amen, on the video and on the podcast. So let me thank the Lord Jesus together, right? Can we thank him? Father God, I thank you right now for this time, for this place, for this space. I thank you for the evidence of your Holy Spirit working and empowering every single person that loves you, that follows you, that agrees with your word, that reads your word and impacts the world because of your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, God, that you would be revealed to those people who don't even believe in you right now, that you would engulf our hearts, that you would be the magnifying glass to everything that we do that seems to be small. You will magnify your greatness over those small things in our lives. I pray, Holy Spirit, move, touch, and I pray, Lord God, that you would really present yourself to those who are really in need of your word, who are really in need of your power, who are really in need of your love. I pray, Holy Spirit, God, that you will move, save, seek those who are lost and save them, Lord Jesus. I plead with you and I plead the blood of Jesus over every single mind right now against every single distraction. I pray for every single household strength. Right. I pray health. I pray protection. Everything that you have for us, Lord God, let it be revealed in this season of our lives. That wherever we might find ourselves, Lord God, that we can find our way out of a situation that we're not supposed to be in. So I pray this by faith, knowing that you're able and you're willing and your word is your will. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Brother Sergio, what's up, bro? 
Long time no see on these blazes, man. And he says, hey, Sam, I'm at work and able to see some of your word before I go back into work. Amen, amen. On your break, right? Get a quick word. Amen. So, But I'm going to go off for a minute. Um, and if you want, you can help me share this with as many people. And then when you have time, bro, you know, you could always hit it up. Whenever you have time, this will be on a replay. It'll be on a podcast. It'll be on YouTube. Wherever you want to watch it, man, you already know. So let me get ready to share this out. So that way um, I could try to break this algorithm that's restricting me from getting um, things out to as many people as I can. I don't know why they're hating on uh, this ministry for. I'm just a minister of the gospel, right? If this is not true, if this is all phony and fake believe and make believe and fake believe and all that stuff, then why bother shadow banning me? But I believe I'm being shadow banned because this message is bothering a lot of people, but it's also reaching a lot of people and touching a lot of people and changing a lot of people. And the devil don't like that. I'm not saying that social media is full of the devil, but I know there's influence of the of the devil in social media. I'm going to leave that right there. Amen. So let's go for a minute. And when we come back, we're going to be in Acts chapter 2. We're going to take it from the very top verse. Amen. And I'm going to go old school and I'm going to take out the Bible that I got saved with. This is the first Bible that I ever had as soon as I became a born again believer. This right here is a classic Bible. It's all beat up, all marked up. Amen. And this Bible has tears in it, ripped pages and all that, man. And we're going to read out of that scripture today. So let me give you a minute if I can find it and we'll be right back. telling you man it's like oof, that minute goes by so fast let's get into it book of acts chapter 2 amen and i'm going to read it from i believe this is the nrv and then i'm going to go into the amplified to get some more of that good juice and that good sauce this is the nrv acts chapter 2 we're going to check it from verse number one and uh, in my former book theophilus no wait a minute, chapter 2 sorry i'm all amped up here acts chapter 2 first verse when the day of pentecost came they were all together in one place. It's very, very important that when you gather, you gather in one place. Amen. And we could do that virtually now. Thank God for technology, right? We could all do it virtually. Amen. And there's no issue with doing stuff virtually. And excuse me, I just missed, messed up this chapter here. And But the thing is, when you gather all in one place, there's power. When the Spirit of the Lord is present, there's freedom and there's liberty. So they were all in one place. Suddenly, this is a suddenly moment from God. To these people who are waiting for the promise. Verse number 2 of Acts chapter 2. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. That means everything was filled up with this violent wind blowing. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. So not only was there one tongue of fire, there was two tongues of fire, three tongues of fire, right? 120 tongues of fire fell on the heads of every single person that was up in that upper room. You're talking about a you're talking about a house party, man. Woo! That must have been lit right there when they see all this stuff. And they weren't drinking, they weren't on drugs, anything like that. They were seeing what God through Jesus promised that was the power of the Holy Spirit God resting upon their heads. Right? All of them were filled. Not one person, not two people, not certain few. All of them in that room were filled. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And the value of this right here, that's what it is. The Spirit of God enabled them to speak in tongues. That doesn't mean that you have to be saved. You're not saved if you don't speak tongues. That's a doctrine that's not even 
part of the scripture is not even in biblical. You don't have to, because you're saved doesn't mean you automatically speak tongues. I know people who are saved and they don't speak tongues, but they're born again. So right here, the Holy Spirit, God enabled these people right here. I speak in tongues, but I'm saying you don't have to speak in tongues in order for you to be saved. Right. Once you're saved, you have the ability when the Holy Spirit, God empowers you to speak in tongues. I've seen it with my own eyes. One time um, my wife was praying over a kid in in the hospital and the parents were Spanish. The mom was there. She only spoke pretty much 90 percent Spanish. My wife speaks a little Spanish, but she doesn't pray in Spanish. But she prayed the whole prayer in Spanish because the Holy Spirit, God empowered her. He, Holy Spirit, God empowered her to speak in the language so that way her, her, the kid's mom will be comforted by that prayer. I've seen it with my own eyes. So that's the Holy Spirit that does that. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Verse 5, we're in Acts chapter 2. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. So everyone was represented in that room. Every nation under heaven, right? They were citizens of heaven, and so are we. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. Even the people out of that room heard that noise, that violent wind. So this wasn't like a hallucination. This wasn't like um, made up. They have eyewitnesses that heard what these, those 120 people in that upper room were actually experiencing. It's like outside. I think I have a DJ in my neighborhood because one of these houses, they be playing some good house music. I hear the boom, 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 and it's outside. I can't hear it, but I can't see it, but I know what's going on. There's music being played. So they knew, even though they couldn't see what happened in the upper room, they heard the sound. Amen. So now they were staying uh, in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? In other words, are not all these men from the hood that are uneducated? But we know one thing, they were with Jesus. Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they had, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. I thought it was twelve in the afternoon, but it was only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And this was the prophecy, and this was the promised Holy Spirit from the prophet Joel. And then Jesus promised Holy Spirit God um, to the disciples. In the last days, and every day that you're alive and every day that I'm alive, these are the last days. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, why are you always saying it's the last days? Listen, every day I'm living today is closer to my last day. What about you? Every day that you're living today is closer to your last day. So let's make it all count. Let's make seconds count. Let's make the days count. Let's take, let's make the days matter. You love somebody, let them know you love them. Amen? So that way you know for sure that you told them that you love them. Bless them in the name of Jesus. When people curse you, you bless them in the name of Jesus. So that way they know that you're different. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons... And daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. They're starting to dream again. And even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. So we're out of here. We, we have that escape button. 
the escape room, amen. When you're a born again believer, we have Holy Spirit God and we're resting in this place that we call earth and we're ready. We're ready for anything that comes our way, amen. We're walking with authority, we're walking with love, we're walking with the power, Holy Spirit power, amen. You remember that book, right, Sergio? The book of Acts. The book of Acts, listen, it's not doctrine. It doesn't really have principles in it. It was like a turn, a transformational book, a transitional book. The disciples were going through first time things. They were they were empowered to do things um, even greater than what Jesus did. All right, and they were spreading out the gospel at a rapid speed. I believe after the first preaching, after the Holy Spirit came, I believe three thousand, according to the scriptures, came to know Jesus right then and there. So they had the first mega church in the first century church. Three thousand people is not bad for the first preaching, right? And I believe it was Peter. Um, that preached the first message. I could be wrong, but I think it was Peter. And can you imagine the one who just weeks ago denied, right, the Lord Jesus Christ three times, denied him, was the one that God used to preach the gospel to reach thousands of people straight off the bat. Amen? So, in the... Why is this stuck here? I'm sorry. Let me go back. Because it was stuck on some kind of... And it's still there. Sec boy. There it goes. Acts chapter 2, the Amplified says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like a rushing, violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Amen? They were waiting. And as each person received the Holy Spirit, I'm skipping to verse 4, and they were all filled, that is, diffused throughout their being. Amen? Filled with Holy Spirit God. This wasn't like something that they made up. I can't... Well, I take it back. I've seen people make up the power of the Holy Spirit being involved in their lives. You know, they get the shakes and they fall on the ground and they start speaking in another, another like voice saying that they're getting word from God. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not saying that that's not real and people don't have those type of experiences. I'm not saying that, but unfortunately, I've seen play actors do that and they were doing it every week, not, not really recognizing that they were doing it every week and to come to find out that it was all phony and fake. But I'm saying there's real power, there's real evidence of Holy Spirit God, and He can move in those ways. I've seen, I've been, me for instance, I've been hit by Holy Spirit God several times in my journey in Christ. Amen. And knocked down to the ground, right? And wasn't able to get up. And I felt the light of God and the power of God upon my body. Yeah, I did the shakes. Amen. Some people call it the Harlem shake. I did that shake and I wasn't, I wasn't happy that it happened to me because I was, I was a little embarrassed. It was a packed crowd. Um, but it happens. Amen. And I'm not going to deny that it, it happened to me. Amen. It happened to me. So I believe it could happen to anybody. Amen. And my battery is dying. And I don't have, I guess if I put this on, no, I don't want to do that. It might um, turn the screen to some kind of phone or whatever. So Holy Spirit God, let's get into this quick um, study version of this scripture here. Uh, hmm. Where am I? I just skipped it again. Nope. Here we go. And the Holy Spirit is, first of all, the Holy Spirit is distributed by God. It's not a lottery. It's not like you buy a ticket and be like, I hope I win the Holy Spirit. You know, in the Bible times when the disciples had the Holy Spirit God and they were moving in the Holy Spirit, right? You know, there was like magicians. There were people who are like so-called psychics. And there were sorcerers that thought they could actually buy that power off the disciples. And there was one sorcerer, I think his name was Simon. He tried to buy Holy Spirit God from the disciples. And one of the disciples got so angry, so upset, he cast that demon out of that man and said, you can't buy this. You can't buy Holy Spirit God. You can't, you know, buy a lottery ticket and be like, I hope I win Holy Spirit. God is the one who distributes out his spirit. God is the one who pours his spirit upon all those that he wants to pour it out on. It's not a game of chance. There's no like winners or losers when it comes to Holy Spirit God. Those who called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who are saved, those who repented. Repented means stopping what you're doing. That's not good. Stop. Turn from that wickedness and turn to the righteousness of God and then ask Jesus to forgive you for all that stuff in the past. Because everything's in the past, right? He'll forgive you and he'll bring into your life. He'll rest in you, the temple of God, which is us, living temples, living sacrifices. He'll put his Holy Spirit in us, right? And we can be empowered by God, like energized, right? We'll be, we'll be straight connect to that source of power that we call God, amen? He equips 
there is no more than enough. There's more than enough power to go around. There's not more Holy Spirit in you than there is Holy Spirit in me. Once I was saved and once you were saved, we got the full deal. Now, are we active in Holy Spirit God is a whole entirely different Bible study. There's people that are saved, born again, right? Blood washed, but they're like inactive. Um, there was a time in my life where I was going 110% hard for the Lord, right? Doing ministry, doing youth ministry, doing concerts. We did hundreds of concerts all around um, the tri-state area, right? And we were getting so many crazy attacks for doing that. But we were also seeing the victory of God over lives being saved. That's why this ministry is called Soul Winners. Because we've seen souls saved by the power, by the transformational power of the Lord Jesus Christ through ministry. So we became soul winners, Inc. Because we saw it right in front of our eyes. People's lives changed. But the enemy, the demons, listen, the devil wasn't saying these little, he wasn't sending these little minions. He wasn't sending a little fleet of demons. He was sending armies against us. And we started feeling the effects of this spiritual war. Amen. So there was a lot of us and then it dwindled down. People were getting married. People were having babies. And then it all trickled down to two, two couples. Amen. And then now it's only me and my wife. And the family is still there. We all believers. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. But we've seen a lot of us turn into a little of us. But we're still called. We're still the chosen. We're still moving forward. So I was one of those people that I was like, man, if I'm going to get so such attacks for preaching this gospel, let me just slow it down. I was trying to hide out. I was like trying to get into the background. Amen. But it was, it was already too late. When people would see me sitting down in their church chairs, they would be like, are you going to minister today? Are you going to do something? Are you going to preach? Are you going to rap? Are you going to DJ? And I said, like, nah, man, I'm just trying to um, sit down and listen to your pastor's word. Listen to the word of God. Amen. I'm just a visitor. And I started noticing everywhere I would go, people would thought I was ready for some kind of spiritual war. Because they saw it working in my life. They saw it working in my wife. They saw it working in, in my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ. The Holy Underground. So in his ink. They saw it happening so much. And they didn't realize that we were under tremendous attack from the enemy. So a lot of people camp out in churches. And they're inactive because they get hit. They're afraid of getting hit again um, by the enemy. But listen, let me encourage those who are in this walk. Let me encourage you. You have the full authority to move forward in the power of God by way of Holy Spirit. And you have to put on the full armor of God. The helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword, which is the spirit of God, the gospel shoes, and the belt of truth. Put it all on, man. Put it all on every day. Don't leave home without your armor. Amen? Because there's a war going on outside. Nobody's safe from. You can run, but you can't hide forever. Amen? That's my old hip-hop golden age um, um, lyrics there. So... Those whom God calls, he equips. There is more than enough power to go around. No one, absolutely no one is left out. Nope. You're saved, you're in the army of God. You're saved, you're under the authority of God. You're saved, you have the power of God in you. You're saved, it's Jesus for us. You're saved, it's God with us. You're saved, it's Holy Spirit in us. There's no better, greater plan than what God has given us once we got saved. So there's more more than enough power to go around. No one is left out. No one gets leftovers. Amen. Just like God has no stepchildren. God has no grandchildren. Amen. God has sons and daughters. We don't have a grandfather God. We don't have a grandmom God. We have God the Father, God the Son, God Holy Spirit. Just like that, we don't get leftovers, so we shouldn't be giving leftovers. You want you want to put your finances forth in the kingdom of God? Then tithe. Give your offerings. Amen. The percentage is really up to you. The more you get, the more you can give. So if you're blessed financially, you gl- you give because you're blessed, so you're a giver. Amen? I believe the more I get, the more I give. That's just me. Um, people, the more they get, the more they keep. You know, that's between you and God. Amen? I just know that God has showed up in my financial situations over and over again. When there is no money to fix this or to get that or to get this, and then all of a sudden it pops up. I can't make it up. The timing of God is perfect. He knows when things are going to happen, when we're going to need a certain amount of money. He knows all of that. So I might as well, I don't have enough anyway, so I might as well give it to the kingdom of God. Give it to him and let him touch it and multiply it. That's how I feel about finances. Amen. So if you're not into tithing, if you're not into giving offerings, that's between you and God. But you should be compelled. I'm compelled just to give. Amen. 
Uh, I give to so many things that I will leave them named because I don't want to lose my reward and I don't want to ruin somebody else's blessing. Amen. So I, I just stay out of the way. Give what I can. And I'm giving, do my giving while I'm living so I know, I'm knowing where it's going. Amen. I heard that a long time ago. I didn't make that up, but it's good. Don't disqualify yourself when you are already accepted. You are already accepted in the kingdom of God. You're saved. You're born again. You're already accepted. Listen, if you have a heartbeat you and you have a thinking mind and you have eyes to see, ears to listen, you're in a good position to receive Holy Spirit right now. All you have to do is admit that you're a sinner, right? Ask Jesus to forgive you for those sins and then believe in the word. And then after you see how God moves in your life from that point on, you're going to want to you're going to want to automatically do something crazy for God. You're going to want to testify. You're going to want to share your testimony. And you're going to want to confess Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior to every single person who comes your way. How do I know? Because I did it. Once I got saved, my eyes were open. I was like, wow, this is crazy. I could have been rapping for Jesus all these years. I could have been DJing for the Lord all these years. I could have been you know, just reaching my friends and my family for Jesus all those years. But I didn't know. I was blinded by sin. What about you? If you're blinded by sin, that means you're in sin. But you could get out of it right now by way of Holy Spirit. That you could ask Jesus right now to rescue you, save you, transform you, renew you, restore you, give you that born again experience so you get all the sauce. And he'll put his Holy Spirit in you. Amen. You might see the tongues of fire. Who knows? God could do whatever he wants to do. I just don't think God has to do the same thing twice because he's such a creative God. He could do so many different things all the time. Amen. Just like the snowflakes come down, not one of them are the same. Not one of our handprints are the same, right? Fingerprints, handprints, whatever you want to call them. God could do things differently every single time that he does it. And he's good at it too. Amen. The scriptures are clear. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is not just for a few of God's favorites because God doesn't have any favorites. God doesn't have no favorites. In fact, we are all his favorites. How about that? We are all on the same ground here. We are all his favorites. Amen. So on the day of Pentecost, those 120 men and women were in the upper room in Jerusalem. And we already read Acts chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Um, they were all together on one accord. Each of the 120 received all of the power of God. They received all of what Holy Spirit offered. And they received all the filling of the Holy Spirit. All of them. Their gender was not a consideration. So um, it's debatable. People say, you know, women are not supposed to be pastors. And they're not supposed to teach men. Amen. Okay, that sounds like a rule. That sounds like a... A tradition that sounds like something maybe Apostle Paul said. Um, and he was, I believe, speaking to a certain group of people. Amen. And it was more like, yeah, talk to your husbands at home. Because I think there was a lot of chit chatter in the church. And there was a lot of women talking. This is just my take on it. But I believe by way of Holy Spirit, which there is no gender, no Jew, no, um, no how you call it, race in the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's no, no Jew, no Gentile, no woman, no man, right? When you're empowered by Holy Spirit, God, God will use anyone to preach his gospel, to teach his word. So I'm not really buying the whole uh, woman can be pastors thing. I understand where they get the, the concept and the, I don't know if you want to call it a doctrine or belief or whatever. Um, but I read it, the same scriptures that they go to all the time. And I'm like, but how is it that God could speak through an animal to a prophet, and how is it that God could use women to be the first evangelist? You know, women were the first on the scene when they saw the empty tomb of Jesus, right? And they ran back, and basically they were first evangelists at the at, 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 about resurrected Jesus. They were the first evangelists to evangelize people with the resurrected Christ message. I'm just saying, I don't think God looks at men or women any differently when it comes to His Spirit. I'm just saying that. Their gender was not a consideration. Neither was their age, nor race, nor status in life. Definitely not status in life. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, look, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God um, than somebody who doesn't have all those riches. Amen. Somebody in heaven must have counted their heads, right? Um, since one flame landed on each and every one of them. So there must have been a delegation. God probably said, okay, there's 120 there. 
I need 120 tongues of fire sent down because I want every head, every head um, to fall on. I want all those heads, 120 of them. Amen. So God has a flame for you. Amen. He doesn't run out of fire. He doesn't run out of Holy Spirit. He doesn't run out of his power when it comes to the Holy Spirit. God speaking through tongues, um, healing power and all that. He never runs out. So he has a flame specifically for you and it's a flame specifically for me. Amen. And uh, I light that flame every day. How do you ignite the flame of God in your life? I'll tell you how I do it. Read his word, man. This is like the cheat sheet in a good way for life. The word of God. Amen. When you don't know what else to do, when you don't know what else to say, amen, I would just go to the scripture. And sometimes when you're under spiritual attack, when you're under oppression, when your demons trying to like get at you, you know, all you have to do is mention the name of the Lord Jesus. Say Jesus. If you don't know what to say, what to do, just say Jesus. And his name alone has the power to make demons tremble and make demons flee. And they don't want to hear that name. Yeshua HaMashiach. They don't want to hear it. In whatever language. They know what you're talking about. I know I have friends and brothers in Christ that say I'm following the American Jesus because I'm not saying his name um, in a proper way. Yeshua, Hamashiach, um, you know, Jesus, like in that dialogue, in that dialect. But God knows the heart of men. He doesn't imagine if God be like, I don't know who you're talking about. My name is Yeshua, not Jesus. God is not going to play that game with my eternity. He's not going to play that game with your eternity. He knows the hearts of men. He knows who I'm speaking to when I speak to him. Amen. And demons know it. So why wouldn't we know it? Okay. So if you have a head, God has a flame. Right now, um, his count includes you. Why? Because you shall receive power. Acts chapter 1, 8. Remember the promise when Jesus said, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What does that mean in our days? He'll reach your neighborhood through you. He'll use you to reach your neighborhood, to reach your city, to reach your state and to reach your country in the outer regions of that country. Acts 1.8. That's the promise from God and it still stands. I don't think not one promise of God has been eliminated from from the word of God. All his promises are yea and amen. All his promises stand. So hang on to his promises. What do you have to lose by hanging on to Holy Spirit God and his promises? So just imagine your head becomes a landing strip for the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A lot of people know that Christians should be on fire for the Lord. And they love watching us burn in the spirit. They want to see us burn. They want to see us burning hot for Jesus. Amen. They want to see us lay hands on the sick and watching the sick recover they want to see us cast out demons in the name of jesus and deliver them from every un every unholy and every wicked spirit i've seen it with my eyes i've been used to do that amen what about you god could use you too that god doesn't god doesn't listen he doesn't wait for people to be qualified he qualifies the people he calls amen so if you're called into the ministry, if you're called to preach, if you're called to be a pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, apostle, right? If you're called to be that, then be it. Amen? You'll be blessed because you believe in God over your life. You'll be um, on the other end of things if you're like real afraid of doing what God called you to do. God will equip us to do the works of the ministry, right? And he'll empower us to move forward in victory according to his word according to his life-giving scriptures. Amen. So every one of the 120 disciples in the upper room on the day of Pentecost received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No one was left out. It was not just the 12 apostles that got it. That's why it's mind-boggling to me why people right now say, yo, everything died when the apostles died. There's no more miracles, no more healing. There's no more this, no more that. It died with the 12. So what happened to the other 100, 100 and what? I'm bad with math. 106, 112, 108. What happened to the 108? They don't count now? You don't know anything about the other 108, right? You're just talking about the 12 disciples. So how about if they lived beyond the disciples? And then they passed on, you know, they anointed somebody, passed on the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Because I see all over the book of Acts that people were saying, okay, now you receive the Holy Spirit now. And it kept on multiplying, multiplying, multiplying. So how did the Holy Spirit's power die again? There's smart people saying that the apostles were the last to do these type of exploits. 
yet we are in 2021 and I still see people getting saved. I still see people getting healed by the miraculous power of God. I still see people getting um, delivered from demons and all that stuff. But yet people are going around saying, oh no, those things died with the apostles. Listen, that's a small God that you're serving. I don't serve a limited God. I don't serve a God who loses power. I don't serve a God who only uses 12 and then skips everybody else. I see a God who uses who he wants to use to expand his kingdom. Amen? That's just me. I could be wrong, but I could be totally right. But I want to be what God wants me to say. I want to say what God wants me to say. I want to be what God wants me to be. Amen. So I don't worry about those other things. Amen. People want to argue about the scriptures. You could go ahead and argue with the scriptures. I'd rather see uh, if there's a soul that needs to be saved um, during that argument. So 120 flames for 120 faithful ones. If you show up, you have a flame of power waiting for you, man. The power is for your assignment. That power is for your life. That power is for your family. So I hope you were blessed. That's all I got. Read the whole book of Acts. Listen, I did a challenge. I called out a challenge. And I'm reading Psalm 119. I'm reading the whole thing. I started it today. Amen. Because I almost forgot that I challenged you before on one of my morning devos. And I think it has 178 verses. It's the biggest book, I believe, in the whole Bible. Psalm, I just want to see to make sure that I'm not going crazy. I think I saw Psalm 119, right? I think it has 100. And 76 verses. So it's going to be a long read, but I'm going to do it. Amen. Because I don't ever put out a challenge and not do it myself. Even when I'm doing my push-up challenges, even when I'm doing my health and wellness. If I put out a challenge, I'm going to be doing that challenge. I'm going to be in it to win it. Amen. I'm not going to say a thing and not do it myself. So just like my walk in Christ, I'm not going to say I'm a believer and not act like one. I'm not going to say I believe Holy Spirit God and not be empowered by Holy Spirit God. I'm not going to say I, I believe in Jesus and then act some, some way different when I'm, I'm off the camera or outside of the church. The way you see me now is pretty much the way you see me everywhere I go. Amen. Take it or leave it. God felt it in his heart. Amen. He, he felt in his heart to save me and rescue me from all my craziness and he did it. So uh, I owe God everything. What about you? So God bless you. I'm out of here. This is the Blaze Bible Study. Hopefully we could get together again Thursday. Uh, it's difficult on Thursdays just because of my, my time frame cuts real close to the starting time of the Blaze. But I'll try my best as usual. And if not, <coughs> I'll be there in the morning. Lord willing. It's all Lord willing. It's all a grace message. I know I have a lot of plans, but if it wasn't for God to really enter into these plans, then I, nothing would get done. So hopefully tomorrow I'll wake up take my daughter to school and hopefully I'll be back in time for the morning Devo. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember always that God is good until the next time. Remember Holy Spirit God has a flame of fire waiting for you. God bless. Peace.